Hi everyone, today I wanted to take a look at the issue of iPhones not connecting to iTunes. So in other words, uh, you plug in your iPhone to your Mac and nothing happens. You don't see your iPhone show up in iTunes, you can't back it up, you can't sync. Uh, in other words, your computer may or may not detect the phone, but iTunes definitely doesn't. So here I'm just going to go through a, a list of known troubleshooting techniques that will resolve the problem for you. Uh, first and foremost, uh, you want to make sure that you're using an authentic lightning cable. Uh, you might pick one up at a gas station for like five bucks, but the problem is that it's most likely uh, counterfeit and doesn't have the uh, microchips on the inside of that connector uh, for the iPhone to identify it as authentic. Uh, the other thing is if you have one of the newer MacBook Pros, you'll uh, obviously know that you have to use an adapter uh, that goes from USB-C to uh, the lightning cable. Now uh, a lot of the ones on Amazon aren't MFI certified so uh, you'll find that the cables and the adapters look good but they're not actually uh, licensed by Apple. So before you're buying any cables or any adapters just uh, make sure that they're licensed by Apple which is MFI certified made for iPhone. Okay. And, uh, you know, uh, if you're going to use a third party cable, one that I recommend is uh, the Amazon Basics cable. Uh, it's just a white cable. Uh, they are MFI certified. I've had this one here for about, I'd say maybe it's going on two years now and it's holding strong. It hasn't frayed or kind of started looking crazy. So once you've got, you know, the kind of hardware parts down, you know, there's nothing wrong with your USB ports, you know that, uh, your cable is an authentic one. You've tried multiple cables. The next thing you want to move on to is, of course, uh, make sure that you have all updates installed on your Mac and on your iPhone. Uh, so on your Mac, you can obviously go to the Apple logo, go to the App Store and check to make sure that all the updates have been installed. Uh, so these are app updates. Uh, let's go into system preferences. If you're in Mojave, it actually changed. You used to get OS updates here, but now they moved them. So now you want to go into system preferences and then you'll have the software update button here. And that's where you'd want to address that one. And it'll check and you'll know that you have all your updates installed. All right, uh, I'll let that run anyway. And let's take a quick look at the iPhone in the meantime. Uh, so you'll obviously go into settings here and you can go into general and software update and you'll see hey are your updates installed it'll give you any that are available so that's pretty simple and straightforward but important you'll be surprised how many times an update uh, resolves an issue all right let's close out of this also quit out of the app store so you won't be needing that all right uh, once updates are installed restart your devices so restart your mac and restart your iphone you can hold down the power button on your iphone slide to power off and then turn it back on after you know whatever 30 seconds or so same goes for your mac click on the apple logo restart okay once the devices have been restarted you can and you're still having these issues let's uh go into the iphone and reset location services uh privacy and location services because sometimes if you tell your iphone not to trust the computer you won't be able to trust it again so you want to go into general scroll down all the way to the bottom to where it says reset and reset um, location and privacy okay and this way the next time that you plug your phone back into the computer you'll get a notification saying hey do you want to trust this make sure that you tap trust otherwise you'll run into that same problem again and uh, if that still hasn't worked all right so you know these uh, problems can get a little uh, tricky and kind of they're different for everyone so uh, you can start taking more invasive methods and uh, start by uh, reinstalling iTunes. So iTunes, the application, uh, fun fact, actually cannot be deleted. So if you take, uh, let's say iTunes in here, where is it? Should be here with an I somewhere. Okay, iTunes, if you say right click, move to trash, it won't let you, it doesn't even give the option. If you try to drag it to the trash, you'll get a notification, iTunes can't be moved. It's an item that can't be deleted. Okay. Now, uh, if you try to Google delete iTunes or uh, reinstall iTunes, uh, the options are very limited and they take you down corridors that really shouldn't uh, 
be traveled. Uh, sometimes it's a third party site that has like a cracked version of iTunes. Stay away from that. Apple does have a KB article. Uh, I will have that in the description here. Uh, so you'll be able to just copy and paste this link. But essentially it's a how-to article that uh, brings you to a download page of iTunes. Once you download it, double click on the installer and it will reinstall a new version of iTunes. And most of the time, uh, it, that right there will fix your problem just by getting a new version of iTunes installed. Okay, uh, if installing a new iTunes doesn't fix it, then you have to dive even a little bit deeper, uh, in which case you'd have to change preference files that might be corrupted and causing uh, these issues for you. Uh, I will also have these in the description so you can just copy and paste and you don't have to worry about, you know, kind of going through all this uh, uh, typing in and out. But essentially, any file here that ends in this .p list, we're going to rename to .old so that the computer uh, or the operating system rather creates a new version of this file that's clean and without any quote unquote uh, corruption. And uh, at this point, you'll usually uh, you know, find the resolution because there's, there's not much else that can go wrong with iTunes uh, aside from these plist files and the app itself. All right, uh, so just for demo purposes, let's do one of these together and then you can just uh, reproduce this for each one of these plist files below. Uh, so let's go for instance uh, here, okay. I'm gonna right click copy and then we're gonna go to finder, go to folder. Okay, and I'm going to, actually let me cancel here because I don't want this window. And now we're gonna do that again, uh, go to folder there we go. You should just get this little window that pops up here. Right click and paste. Now I want you to notice something here. Uh, we're going to the directory forward slash users forward slash MKNet. Now MKNet, that is my username. Your username is going to be different. And here's a quick way of how to find your username. So we're going to Macintosh HD. Okay, you go to users. And then you'll see the little uh, folder that has the home icon. That's your uh, username. So that's where that's the folder that it's going to be going to. All right, so let's click go. And there we are. It, it immediately brings us to this plist file. What you want to do now is just click on that plist file and we're going to rename it plist.old. All right. And essentially what will happen is the next time you launch iTunes, that file will get automatically recreated. So reproduce this step with all of the files uh, below here. Okay, and I have the directories and the names of the files that you want to rename. And then, you know, you can always try to do each one and then start iTunes and see if that solves your problem. Also, after um, renaming these files, not really necessary, but maybe a good idea just to restart your computer to make sure that those uh, updates are confirmed. All right, and this pretty much will cover 99% of the issues that you have with iTunes. Uh, the final and most kind of invasive step that you can take is reinstalling the operating system, uh, meaning you can reinstall the OS without deleting any of your data, just kind of uh, installing a fresh copy of Mac OS on top of all your documents and files. And that's kind of, kind of like a kill all. Uh, if that still doesn't work, then you have to essentially go back to factory default, uh, like a clean, fresh slate without any data or anything on it, uh, in which case you'd want to save your stuff to either Google Drive or, you know, Dropbox or maybe like an external hard drive or even a flash drive if you don't have much data. But uh, at that point, you've pretty much covered all bases as far as figuring out why your iTunes isn't working. And if you're still having issues after this, I'm actually very curious to know what you might be experiencing. So drop a comment, uh, let me know what you've got going on, and I'll be more than happy to troubleshoot it with you. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you next time.